first to enter the den are Dan Wiseman and Joe Mills. And they appear to be going into battle a man down. There's three of us in the business and our other colleague uh, Tristan, uh, he's not here today because he's actually getting married. I've forgotten best man duties to actually be in the den today pitching our business. It looks like some sort of board game. One of you's going to be terminated. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It'd be quite good to get rid of the four of you. Hello, Dragons. My name's Dan. And I'm Joe. We're here to introduce our award-winning mystery puzzle game company, The Detective Society. We're looking for an investment of £75,000 for 7.5% of our business. Uh, I'm the managing director. Uh, and I'm head of games design, so I create the puzzles and design the narratives that the players enjoy. So the games sell for between £30 and £35. Each box is packed full of case files, uh, photographs, maps, uh, physical evidence, everything that you could need to solve the thrilling case. And we combine these physical components with a range of online digital elements. For example, players will have to use fictional company websites and detective tools that we've created, such as criminal databases. We want to create a fully immersive world for the player. We want them to feel like a real-life detective. So we have a demonstration for you today that can be working through. I actually think that's a call for one of you dragons. Ah. If one of you would like to answer it's it, me. go ahead. That'll be my mother. Hello, dragons. Locked inside that chest, there is a precious message. Your goal is to open it. Play at Home Immersive Mystery Puzzle Games is the offering from Dan Wiseman and Joe Mills. OK, so now I need help. The order in which we joined the yes. programme. Yes. OK, starting from Peter Jones is first, then it's me, then it's uh, Tuka, uh, okay. then it's Sarah. Because I'm not the newbie anymore. Ooh! <laughs> They're willing to hand over 7.5% of their business. So you'll need to text that number that you've revealed with the code word. Got a text message back. It says the code to open the chest is 591. There we go. Come on, we dying to see wait, what's I in. Wait. <laughs> in return, the entrepreneurs are asking for £75,000. Uh, thank you for listening to our pitch. We will now be happy to take your questions. Aha. Uh -huh. There you go. Sarah Davies has a track record of investing in virtual escape room ideas. The purple box has a bit of everything from our range, and the blue box is an actual product. That's episode one. And she's first to look for clues that this concept could also be a breakout business. Guys, I think it seems great. Just let me get this right. You're the business brains, yeah. you're the gaming brains. Yes, yeah. and there's actually a third member who's not right. here today, he's actually getting married. Oh. Uh, and he's head of narrative. And can I just ask, what's your ownership structure in the business at the moment? Uh, third, third, third. Excellent. So, million dollar question. How many millions of dollars have you sold? <laughs> so um, our first year accounts only represented six months of trading, um, and that was turnover 167,000, uh, gross profit 68,000, and net profit 28,000. So our projections for this first coming year is uh, turnover 500,000, um, yeah. gross profit 200,000, net profit 66,000, somewhere around that mark. So you are halfway through the year, you're a good way through that. Yeah. Sales target. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's quite impressive. Dan and Joe. Hi. Um, I'm the detective. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you some detective questions. OK. Right. Yeah. So you're actually turning over a couple of hundred grand mm -hmm. and you've come into the den mm -hmm. trying to pull a wool over a detective's eyes and buy you a million pounds. Isn't that a bit <laughs> wishful thinking? Well, I think we're looking ahead, really, at the opportunities that we've got. Um, globally, board games are, are predicted to be $12 billion by 2023. Um, escape rooms, for example, in the US is a $466 million market, and we cross aspects of all these different things. We just need a bit of help to get so, to that stage. you want me to invest in you mm -hmm. on a future valuation, mm -hmm. not on today's valuation, on a hope factor? Sure. We'd be willing to hear an offer, Tuka. <laughs> <laughs> The entrepreneurs give a cheeky riposte to Detective Suleiman's opening line of questioning. 
Peter Jones is no stranger to investing in game ideas. Has the sample of this one he's been handed also got Dan and Joe pass go? I think what you've put together is exceptional. Great. I think the quality is incredible. Even that sort of identity badges that you've done. Yeah. We probably pay £15 for these for my offices. Right. Oh. And that's just one part of the pack. Yeah, I wasn't that impressed. I thought, you know, because as the piece of card here says, yeah. this is a sample of many of the things that come in many of the boxes. Yeah, the purple box is a sample of some of the things that go across. Oh, that's of everything you do. OK, so I should open the other box, really. Yeah. So if I was to, you know, look at maybe this box and yeah. take this one as the standard box, right? Yeah. Well, I'm opening this and it's got a couple of pieces of paper in it and a padlock, and that's 30 quid. But you're missing the point, cos we're not buying the, what's in the box. Yeah. Yeah. We're buying what's in his head. How do we know the value of what's in his head, though? Well, that's the whole thing that we've got to ascertain. Can I just comment on that? So, um, we um, compare ourselves. If you, if you take a group of friends to a physical escape game, you might pay £30 each. So, four of you, £120. Um, we would compare ourselves to getting a similar experience. In fact, we're probably 30 minutes longer than the average. Um, so it's not just what's in the box, there's also all these online elements. You would compare yourself mm -hmm. in that little postage from, box from an to an escape room's experience. Absolutely, yeah. From Where you have multiple rooms and there's huge mm -hmm. sets and cr crazy, crazy props. You open... Yeah. Sometimes the, the, the wall will fly up. Yeah. Amazing you know, real-world experience, sure. you would compare that in value to getting a box in the post with s several pieces of paper? Well, I'm saying we don't cost as much as doing that with a group But you, of you think they're comparable? In terms of the value for money, yes, I do. Stephen Bartlett suggests he believes that punters might not be getting enough bang for their buck with the detective duo's box. But it seems Peter Jones is wondering about Dan and Joe's endgame for this game offering. I always like to try and work out how I can get out before I get in. Yeah. So where's the exit for this business and where's the return on investment? Yeah, so we'd hope to be turning over about five million in year three, uh, with a roughly a two million um, gross profit, 600,000 net profit. And the exit piece? So maybe in five years we'd be looking for an exit. We can see it being sold to a bigger company like Hasbro. Guys, the problem is you come along and tell me that this is a five-year project. I'm 67 years old and I've given myself three-year targets. So as a detective, I've done my investigation. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you're in the line of duty or something all of a sudden? <laughs> can this I is just Dragon's finish? Den. Anyway, um, I wish you all the best, but I'm not going to invest. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Tuka Suleiman thinks the pair's plans are too long-term and it's case closed for an investment from him. And it appears that Stephen Bartlett is still feeling a little flat about the clue-finding concept. Dan, Joe, um, this might be because of the digital generation that I'm part of. But this feels like a bit of a step back, where you're sending an experience in the post, which isn't as sort of immersive and engaging to the generation that I represent as I think it could be. Had you come in here and told me that this was a virtual reality game, mm -hmm. then I would have been super in interested. Mm -hmm. But for me, this is a step back. Okay. So for that reason, I'm going to say that I'm out. OK, thank you. I do think that you've come up with an interesting concept. But as a business, I'm really concerned about your exit thoughts and processes because I don't think you'll do it. So for that reason, I'm going to say sadly that I'm out. You're really good. I, don't, I think without you, I don't think that this, to me, is a slam dunk, mm -hmm. you know, because it is about the games you come up with and it is about your ability to pick up on whatever is the latest theme. I think you have got something here. So I'm going to make you an offer. This is going to rely entirely on Sarah, because I'm going to offer you half of the money, and I want 12.5% of the business. Deborah Meaden throws the duo a partial lifeline, but her offer depends on game-loving Sarah Davies matching it. Will she be prepared to roll the dice 
and offer half the money for half the deal. I really like the business. I really like both of you. So I would be willing to match that offer on the table. However, two dragons is quite often not better than one because that's two of us to keep happy. Right. So I will also offer you all of the money, 75 grand, okay. for 25% of the business. Thank you, appreciate that, thanks. I think you need to talk to the wall and think about what is it you want and need from a dragon. Okay, can we have a moment? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sarah Davies makes a strong statement of intent by suggesting she might be all the duo need to springboard their setup. But she is also prepared to share a deal and the £75,000 with Deborah Meaden. I'd be actually bloody terrified to work with you two. I mean, I think both of them together would be fantastic, but yeah, I don't, I'll leave it to you. But both offers would mean handing over way more of their company than the 7.5% that the entrepreneurs want to give away. Really appreciate um, both your offers, that's really kind. Um, can I ask, do you two believe that you'd be a good fit together, working together? Oh, yeah. Um, I am very happy to work together. Mm -hmm. We offer very, very different skills and we work in very different ways. Yeah. But I think, as a pair, you can get the best of both worlds. Would you consider working together for 20% in total, so 10% each? Um, I think the right setup is that dragons are a quarter, you three are a quarter each. We're all sitting on, a, sure. in, on an equal footing. Okay. I would agree. In that case, we'd be happy to accept your We'd combined look. offer. Tremendous, tremendous. Much. Excellent. Congrats, guys. Yeah. Go and give Tristan the good news. Will do. Yeah, we will. Yeah, nice to meet you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Dan and Joe have solved the mystery of the missing investment. They leave the den with the £75,000 they came for. That was stressful. You were so good. And two delighted dragons joining their journey. Virtual fist pump. Boom. Well, we've got to make sure we don't call Tristan during the middle of his <laughs> wedding ceremony. <laughs> That's um, But, yeah, I think we'll just tell him the good news yeah. that we've got Deborah and Sarah. Yeah.